Okay, all right. So what we'll be doing today is I'm going to build a database that has students, teachers, and courses. So please, I'll do this all very quickly. So students, teachers, and courses, I'll build a database with a, just a few of the columns. So for teachers, I'll just put in um, a teacher ID and a name. For students, just a student ID and a name. A course, just a course ID and a name. And then grades for the students. So what columns do you think I should have in a grades table? If I want to record the students, the courses they took and the grade they got, what column should I have in the grades table? Okay, SID, what else? CID, TID, and then the grade. Right. So maybe score. I'll just say score. Right. So these are the tables that I'll be building in my database. I'll do this quickly. I'm recording. So you can also do this by yourself. So, um, well, wireless is here. So after this, I'll share and then you can download. All right. Okay. So these are the things I'm going to have. So I'm going to make a new blank database. Um, So I said I'm going to have a student's table with SID and name, right? SID and name. Oh, come on. Okay, it's complaining about the name, so I just made it uh, name. So I'm just going to keep it as short name. I'm in a hurry, so I'm just going quickly. But um, in an exam or quiz scenario where there are, there's a need for more columns, you can pick more columns. And remember that what you can pick the appropriate data type. You don't always have to use short. It depending if it's the date of birth or something, you can enter the right one. All right. So just very quickly. So a student table. Next, a teacher table. And while I'm doing this, I should say we are discussing whether or not we should have a practical exam. Well, a practical exam, so you, you come and then you, you do this work for us on a machine. Bring your laptop. There are also school machines, but it may have to run in shifts where you come in, you show us what you can do next group, and so on and so forth. Anything that happens. So we're actually thinking about that. CID and course name. And then uh, the course code. Right. And the last one we said was we are going to have um, the grades table. SID, TID. Uh, course ID and then score. So anything I have to do to this table, is it okay? Not everything is short text. Okay, this should be a number, right? It could be some. I mean, right now it's an integer, meaning I cannot store store a uh, decimal. So maybe I should use a decimal for this. All right, so number still, but instead of long integer, I'm going to use um, decimal. I'm going to use decimal. I'd say maybe six two. What does it mean to say six two? What numbers can I store here? Oh, actually, this is too big. Um, six four is better. Sorry, that's crazy. Six three. Someone said six. That's the best, right? At least in this case, if it's a percentage. So that means what? Three numbers for the full part, three numbers for the fractional. So maybe 100.000 or 99.123. Right. What if it were 64? What numbers could I store? Could I store 100.00? Right. Because the difference, the two, means I can only store two whole numbers for fraction. Right. So at least six, three, three, three numbers for, or three numbers for. 
All right. Should SID be short text? Why not? All right. So remember, SID is going to be a foreign key to the student table. So if we look at student, right now, student is SID, which is the primary key. And if I want to use that primary key, here, what is the type of primary key? It is an auto number. And it says it is a long integer. So if somebody is going to refer to it, he must also be what? A long integer. So this is very important when you are doing your design. That anything where, okay, save it. It's the design. Where this, so SID is going to be getting the values from a student table. The data types must be the same. If you pick long integer here, it must be long integer there. It's not connecting to the full name. It's connecting to the SID. We are not recording the full name in this table, in the gray table. We are recording the SID. So the data type must match. So it's not a, a name. SID is just a number. Right. So every all our IDs that we are using now, we are using numbers. But he's right. There are in some schools where the, the SID may not be um, number. So question, and I'll take yours. Okay, so that's a very good question. All right, so he's asking why is it that if they are supposed to be the same, why is it that it doesn't say auto number as well? Now, auto number is just a special kind of integer that if chosen for a primary key, you can only use auto number if it's at least the database designs we have now. We can only use auto number if it's the primary key, meaning that it will count for us. But in any other case, you can just say it's a number. But auto number is actually a long integer, a number long integer. So let me just click the auto number. You can see that it's just, and it says increment. Right. And so if I pick something else, so this is just going to have to be long integer as well, the same as any other auto. So they are the same type, except that auto number is a special type of long int, which is automatically going to be counting. Right. So I've created my tables. I seem to be very happy for now. Now I'm going to link them up. Um, save changes. Yes. Let me close all of these. Save, yes. All right. Then I go to database tools and use relationships to put my tables together. All right. So I'm going to start connecting them. So I have course, student, teacher. All three of these are going to connect to the grade. All right. Question? Um, so you can actually reorder these any way that you want. The first one doesn't have to be a primary key, but they usually do it first to remind you that every table must have a primary key. That's why it comes first. It's just like you're writing a letter. If you created a letter template in Word, they will do the address and DF for you just to start you off. So it's just starting off that you can have a primary key. But to answer his question, no, you don't have to have, so that was a, a great table design. The first one does not have to be the key. You can move it somewhere else. It doesn't really matter. The column position doesn't matter. Right. So are people understanding his question? Does primary key, does primary key always have to be the first? No, it doesn't really matter. Right. So I can close this. OK. So it doesn't matter. You can, but it's bad design. The principle of databases is that if you have databases, each row must be unique. If you don't make them unique, how can you differentiate one from the other? So usually you add a key in. I mean, you can have the data, but if you put in a primary key, then the database can watch for you that the person doesn't repeat it, unless you want to do the management yourself. But that's why we have DBMS. A lot of these, we are letting the system do it for us so that it manages the numbers. We don't want to do it manually. You can, but you don't want to. So you, you mark it as primary key so that from now on the system will make sure that that column, the values that are unique. Right. Okay, so let's link them up. So it's just a matter of drag drop. So SID to SID. And some people have not been enforcing. 
If you say enforce, that means that what? It will make sure that in this case, I'm connecting um, SID in student table to SID in grade. It means that you can't enter an SID in the grade table where the student has not already exist in the student table. So you must add the enforce. Those of you who don't have enforce, you can do anything you want. That means that you can enter bad data, right? So um, that's the thing. So imagine if there was no enforcement, then it means that a teacher who wants to make his course seem like it has high grades, even though the students failed. Oh, you go in there and then add some. We don't do this, by the way, in our system. We, we can't assign grades unless there's a student. That's why even when we take attendance, we can't take your attendance if you are not a student. Right. So everything is linked. Teacher is joined to that one, and again, enforce. And course, sorry, course assigned to course. Right. Again, enforced. So we are going to go in there and put in a few values, just very quickly. Um, save. Hmm. Hello. Yes. When you do that, oh, you mean the, for the queries? Yes, so that's why you have to assign there. So I'll get to that one as well. So I'm adding in, okay, and copy. Okay, so I've added four students. Wait, why is this thing? What was that noise? Oh, someone's phone. Okay, all right, someone's phone is dying. Okay, so right now we have um, the students. I've just entered four students. In the courses, I'm going to enter four courses. Maybe programming one. Um, Programming two, um, text and meaning, um, okay, I don't know the, the quotes, I'm just putting something in there, all right, and then teachers, so let's do um, Dafla Jackson. How big are you? Okay, I'm just putting an, a few names there. All right, okay. A few names. All right. Now, uh, today I'm going to show you how to do the lookup. I did last time, but I think some people have forgotten. So I'll go through the process in a recorded way. All right. So what we tend to do is when we are recording the grades, right? Right now, we when we are entering a number, for example, we can say uh, maybe teacher number two, top course number three, um, the student is mm, maybe student number four, and the score was 50%, right? Now, if you enter, for example, student number 10, who took uh, teacher, let's say three, was three, 60. It gives us a warning that we cannot add a, a record uh, because there's no 10 in students. I mean, that's basically what this error is saying. So it says you cannot add or change a record because a related record is required in students. So this is actually enforcing, sorry, the diagram that we drew. So in the diagram that we drew, we are saying that the SID was connected to what? The student's SID. So it means that if I don't have a student with that ID in the student table, so in my student table, there's nobody who is 10. So it won't allow me to what? Proceed and add the number. So that is why... When you do your design, you must also what? Draw a diagram and link them up. And not just link them up. Remember when I linked them, I actually, um, I added enforcement. So some people don't have this checkbox. If you don't say enforce, it will not enforce. You can, the person can still do anything he wants, right? So add the enforcement so that it, it restricts. Right. All right, so that is why we need enforcement. Now, the other thing that we like to have is it would be nice if you could see the students' names when we are entering the data here. Right. So in order to do this, what we do is we add what are called lookups. Right. So let me close um, all the others and work on the grade table. Right. Now, a lookup means that when I see the student ID, I would like to be able to pull that name when I'm actually doing the entry. So it makes it easier for me. It doesn't change how the database behaves. It's just saying that what 
add some ease of use so that we can easily populate or enter data. So let's say student, SID. So I pick what? Lookup, which is the second tab here. So next to general, where we do the types, there's one here for lookup. Instead of text box, um, say you want a list, right? And from the list, it says, yes, I want it from a table. That's the second, sorry. Second one, I want it from a table. What's the name of the table is the next question. The name of the table for this case is student. Where is the student ID? It is in the first column. How many columns? That's the second question. How many columns does the student table have? I'd say it has two. Some people have three or more, but in this case, I just have two. Um, note that I could, for example, let me add, sorry, just to add some date of birth. I just do date of birth. Date. Just so that we can have the varying lengths. Format, I want to use, um, where is this date? A short date for this one. All right, so I've stored my student. So now I have what? Three columns. So it means that if I want to show these three columns, I should say what? Column count is what? Three. Right. So I can do the same also for the teacher ID. Though the teacher one has just two tables. So list box, this one, third column should be what? Teacher. How many columns does the teacher table have? Two. Right. Course table. How many columns does course table have? One, two, three. Right. So it means that when I'm doing the lookup, I will say I want a list, sorry. List box, query, um, this one should be course table. So they say bound column. The bound column is the column that you're going to be displaying. But I mean, that you're going to pick to fill that field. So the CID is in the first column. That's why we're saying one. If CID were in the second column, we'll say two. If CID is in the third column, we'll say three. And of course, there's a question of Column count, how many columns is in that table? In this case, three, right? So now I've done this, let me save this table. Save, sorry, close. And in my grades, you can actually see that there's a little drop down when I'm clicking. So I don't just have to enter the number, right? So this is actually very useful, right? So that now we can, we don't have to just enter the numbers. We can actually do that by, yeah, took maybe um, Dafla, the course, sorry, programming one. Let me extend this a little bit. This is a little bit too much. Programming one, score. So this is people. I'm just entering a lot of programming one grades, that's all. And one. Okay, so I've put in some people into the grade table. Right. Let me save this and close this. Now what you'll be doing for us this Friday, so the next thing coming up is writing queries. Now, writing queries is very easy to do when you're using Microsoft Access. There's a nice query wizard here, query design. Right. Now, query design, when you choose it, you realize it looks very much like the relationship design, right? It gives you your tables. So if I ask you a question, so we'll just do a few for practice. For example, show names of all students. That's the first one. Now, what table is the name of students coming from? Right. And that means that I have to pick students. So I'll pick the student table. So that means that this is a table that I will be getting data from. So all the tables you'll be getting data from, they have to what? Be put onto the diagram. And then you can say, okay, I want the full name. So you just double click it. And you can see it's, saying, it's getting full name from the student table. It does this for you automatically. You can use a query wizard. Or you can use any of them. I'm just starting the simplest. So um, you can do this. There's also code in the back. So um, yes, there's code. But I am starting from here. 
where people can see the, the nice things. Right? So we'll start from this and we'll look at the code in the back. Right? So at least you can see that if I want student names, I'm going to take it from the student table, right? And from the student table, I want what? The name. There is a button here called run. So when I hit this, it's going to what? Run this query. So if I click this, it's going to use the information that what? I specified in the wizard to generate the results. Right? And when you do this, you can also save your query. So this is question one. So if you do this part, you can save question one. Names of students. Don't make it very long in terms of name. Just something descriptive, like question one and four. So nice to have. All right. So someone can also ask to show names of students and courses they are in. All right. So this is an interesting question. We are supposed to show is DBMS the names of students and the courses. They are in. So this is a sample 2014 02. Ah, we are 03 31. All right. So under query design, so let's pick. Um, I think I got myself lost. Where's my design wizard? Okay, let me close this. Close and start one. Query design. Okay, if I'm supposed to show the names of students and the courses they are in, what tables do I need? Okay, definitely student table, and which one? Okay, course table. But it's that, I mean, how, how do I relate this? Can I just say student and course? I mean, look at this. It says SID, full name, DOB. And I also have what? CID, course name, course code. How do I link these together? So look at this diagram. How is students linked to the course? From students, how do I get to course? Do I get to course and students? Or there's something that links them together? I need the grade table. I need the grade table. So I need to look at the students, the ID here. So here, if I had to do it manually, if someone says, okay, which students are in programming one? Right. I first have to what? go to the course table. So just follow me along just to get the whole idea. Right. I go to the course table, I see the course ID, which is one. One is programming one. If I go to the grade table, I can see that what? One, one, one is listed for student number one, two, three, and four. And then from here, I can go where? To the student table, finally, to get the results. This is what we're doing that first day, and people were kind of asking me, it's so easy. Why are we doing it? The reason we're doing it was there will come a time like this when the code and the technology comes, and you must apply that same logic. It's not hard, but it's just that you just have to apply the same skills you use that day. On that day, you were given the different tables, and then you went through and said, oh, from this one, I go to this table. I go to So this is the chance for you to show me that you can do that. Right. And that's why in this design, from students, what do I need before I get to course? I need the grade. Right. So from students, sorry. I need the grade table. Right. And then once I get the grade, I can see that there's a student ID there. There's a teacher ID there's a course ID, then I follow that course ID to go to the course table to get that course. So I need three things. Sometimes you need just two things, but in this case, I need what, three things. If they are not directly linked, you have to ask yourself, how do I go from here to here? Right. Do you understand this question? Okay, so manually starting, you can start from course table, right? get the course IDs, okay, programming one, course ID is one. And then I go to the grade table to go and look up that all these students, so course ID one, it's associated with four students, student number two, three, four, and one. 
And then from here, manually, I could then go to the student table and then I'll tell you, oh, you know what? I'm a, yeah, if you're in farming, are the people doing programming one? Right. But it, to do that, I actually went through three tables. I went from course to grade to student. So when I'm doing my query design, it means that I have to have what those same three tables that I use manually. So computers just implement what we what we think, right? How it links? Okay, so let's hide this, right? Um, remove this. Remove this. Remove this. Now the nice thing about Microsoft Access, okay, I'm not advertising Microsoft. Right. I'm just saying what it's doing. The nice thing here is, if you have done a good job, so please look at this please. In my relationships, I took my time and what? Connected all the lines. Right. So it means that if I'm doing a query, it can automatically know that, oh, you were working, you knew that there's a relationship between this table and that table. So anytime it shows those two, it will draw the line for you automatically. You don't have to keep drawing the line over and over. You just need to do it once here. That's why on Friday, we said, well, when you do your tables, you join them, right? So that any other time, so in your query, you say, well, I want students, I also want to have, um, let's see, grade. See, quickly connected it. Because I already done this. So I just double click to add. Okay, I'm adding extra. That's unnecessary. And then if I say student, sorry, I think it's, it's gotten crazy now. Let me remove this one. Remove. Remove show tables. Okay, so it's in this case, I think I've added a remove too many times. If it doesn't, just connect. Oh, I already have a student already. Sorry. What else do I need? I think I've gotten lost. Okay, I need a course. Right. So you see, it's connected the course for me. So anytime you put them on in the query view, it will what? Connect them for you automatically. Now, I said in the question, it says, I want the names of students and the courses they are in. So someone said, well, maybe you need the names of the courses. So that means that what I want what? The name of the student, this one. So I just double click. I want the course you are in. That is this course, right? So I can either show the course name, course code. Right. And when I say, sorry. Sometimes the tabs jump around. Another query design brings you. Oh, what did my query do? Uh, okay, I think my data was managed. Sorry, design. Let me just run it in way. For some reason, my diagram vanished, but my answer is out. So you see, it's bringing out all the recording. So it's actually going through. Connecting from what? The name to the course and showing everything. Now, I'll save this. We are almost um, 20 minutes time. I want to save this and do a last one before we finish. So I can ask a lot of time for questions. Students and course. Right. Now, I'm going to make a new query. Right. Where did it go? Query design. Query. Okay, there it is. I'm going to show students grade course. This time I'm going to show all of the columns. Right? I'm going to click on everything. SID, uh, TID, CID, score, GID, CID, course name, course code, and run this. It's going to be a very long table. But note that for this one, so look at this. It's taking on the first row, student ID is four. So it says student or SID is what four. And it goes to the next table, which is grade or SID four. It will go all the way to the next table and say course or CID. But note that CID here is what three. So it's saying that grade or CID is three, and the name to course or CID three. So whether or not you display the column, it actually has all this information already. And all you are doing is to pick which columns you are showing. By linking them, it knows it has all these, right? So in the previous one, all I did, so some people wonder, how does it know to connect? When you are displaying, so in the case of, um, let's say this one, design view, I just picked three columns out of all the possibilities. 
But in this one, I'm showing all the columns. And here you can verify for yourself that what on each row is showing how it actually did the linking. So you can start with this one. If you are sorry, this is if you are with three. This one, so up to here. Sorry, this is from the student table, you can see, right? Three, the name, date of birth. And then it went and connected it to the grade table. And in the grade table, you can see that the student ID three. So three was marked to three. And in that table, you can see that cost one, grade of CID is one. And that links all the way to, you can see the cost detail on the end. One programming one, CS101. So queries actually are used to process information from the tables. Right? So if you build a database, you should at least know how to write a few queries. Someone says, oh, display first name, display last name, display this, display that. You should be able to. Is everyone okay with this? Who said no? Okay, who said no? And then we'll take questions and try and solve. So when you're asked to find information, there are three steps. First is, where is the information coming from? Right. Which columns do you need? And then the linking comes in because the information is spread out over several tables. If you are lucky and it's all from one table, like the first one, we just wanted what? The name of the student. It's from the student table. That's this one. There was no linking involved. It was just what? Where is the design? Um, here there was no linking. It was just what? One table. If the information you want comes from one place, there's no need to link anything. Are you understanding? But if the information you want comes from different columns in different tables, then you have to what, link the tables and then pull the data that you want. The total number of... Okay. Um, okay, so let me save this and then we'll do one of those. So question two. Um, I thought question three. Question two all student and course data. All right. Let's do another design wizard. No, not sorting field. Right. Okay, so um, let's go through again. So what you showed us, right? So let me move this. So starting off with, if you highlight the column, right, you can add totals, meaning that you're going to be doing some sort of additional grouping based on this. And then you can pick what you want to do, whether you're doing the average, some minimum max. So, for example, you can find the sum of the scores. We can go and pick the score thing from. Score again. Um, we can find the average sum score. Okay, the max and scores, we can also find the min. And then let's run this. Okay, so it's saying that according to this, from our database, the sum is, all of them is 230. That's the average. That is the maximum score. Someone was zero. Okay. That is the lowest score. But this is coming from this one. So if I go here and change the results in any way, so if I made maybe 30, and I go back, um, where is this? Three tables. Save, close, and I come back here. Where is the design? Okay. Sorry. If I run it again, it gives me now 30. Right. So you can do this. Um, the other thing you can do, so let me 
it should work, but let's do one. Um, okay, so if you have, this is like a complex one, but if you wanted to find out, let's say, the minimum grade a student has ever scored. Um, this one, sorry. I only have 10 more minutes, so I'll, I'll do this just so it goes on the video, then I'll take uh, questions. At least it's another type. So if I wanted to find a minimum grade a student ever got, I still have course, grade, and students, right? I need to get out the student's ID, the name. And I also need, I don't even need the course name. This is not necessary. I just need a student and a grade. Score. Now, if I do, um, come on. Let's say the minimum. We said we wanted a minimum grade extent of our code. Right. If I pick min, so it means that pick the students and the full names. Right. So you, you have those. But of all of those students and full names, for so each one, find for me the minimum grade. Right. And what this will actually do is you pull out for each student the minimum grade they ever got. There's one person in the grade table who got the full score. So let's check and see that. In the grade table, someone got two scores. Um, student number four. In one course, he got 50. And in one course, he got 70. Right. Now, if you look at this, student number four, the minimum is 50. So that's what it's giving. Right. So when you actually link, so the link, I don't think you can really avoid it. When you link several of the of the tables or information from different places, you can pick something and say, for this student, I want to find the minimum or for this course, I want to find the maximum. So for example, the maximum grade in a course, we're running out of time, so I want to do the last one and then questions, design. Maximum grade in a course, I pick the course, I pick the grades, right? If I'm picking the maximum grade in a course, I need to show the course I course me. But what, the scores that are there, I'm going to highlight that column and say, for that column, do what? The max, this is almost like Excel, except I'm just showing us the columns. So I'm saying, get me the course ID, get me the course name. And for that score, where I want the maximum, I'm going to say, um, do a max. And if I run this, it's showing that for programming one, the maximum was 70. And for programming two, it's 50. Right. So this is how you can do the grouping. So it's not just um, sum and max. There are a few of these there. So where is it going? Where is design view? Design view. And like here, there are quite a few. Some average minimum max counts is here. So if someone says, maybe find how many students are doing what did my course, I could just switch this to count and run this query. And according to this, four people did programming one and one person did. Right. So any questions? So she asked a very good question. So any questions? Now, some of that time about SQL. SQL, we'll look at it in the next class, right? So, in the next class, on Wednesday, right? So, um, I've finished these. Um, where is design view? Okay, let me save this as well. So, this is query number three. Um, what was this one called? Statistics. I'll call this grade statistics. Um Another one, this one was um, minimum grade Q4, minimum grade of student. There was more, okay, there was this one too, which was number of students in the course, Q, question five, number of students course. All right, so I'm going to save all of these. Since you guys are now on Wi-Fi, oh, has this thing gone off? Oh, it has. Okay. I'm going to try some interesting sharing today. Okay, so any other question? Oh, you're all okay. 
you have to go and try it. And yes, yeah, you definitely have to try this out. Yes. That is instead of putting it on. Um, okay, so the lookup wizard was what I showed um, under the grid. The lookup wizard doesn't do a query for you. The lookup wizard, okay, so. Um, was it under the query? Under queries. So lookup was actually under design, at least for this one. What I'm demonstrating here. Where it shows the list like this. That is the lookup. That was the one where I said, it's in this video anyway. Um, under the design view, you can go to lookup, click list box, table, specify the name of the table. So that is the lookup. Uh, no, it's not the same. The lookup. So what lookup does is, lookup helps you to easily fill the form. It doesn't, it doesn't get you any, I mean, if I ask you what is the average, you, you won't see this in the lookup. What the lookup is, is just to say, oh, if I am trying to fill in data here, can you go and look up the, the value? I mean, look at the things in the other table. Tell me what they are to make it easy for me to pick the right number. So that is why we do the lookup, just to add that in. So that means now you are all happy. So that means you should be able to what, draw your tables, choose the primary key, link the foreign keys, and then what? Do the lookup. So the lookup is today. Do the lookup. You also should be able to what? Write some simple queries. So which columns, which tables you need, pull them together, and then what? Run. Okay, so thank you very much. Let me see if I can put this up.